Welcome everyone to another episode of the Not Part of Your Scene podcast. This is Chris Sarda, and this is the pool list episode that we do every week. This is for comics coming out Wednesday, April 17th, and basically this is just an opportunity to talk about uh, what's coming out, what I've been reading, what I've heard is good and I'm not reading, etc., etc. You can follow along with me by going to comiclist.com. Um, I, another website I recommend uh, for new comics is leagueofcomicgeeks.com, uh, also a very good site. Uh, normally, if I want to see covers and stuff, I go to League of Comic Geeks, and if I'm doing something like this or I just need to see the list, I go to comiclist.com. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, I, like many people, every week say that I'm cutting back, and then sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It all depends. But a number of things looked interesting to me today. Uh, so first off, we will uh, take a look at uh, Aftershock Comics. The Monster Hunter books don't look especially, um, didn't exactly grab me, the Mary Shelley Monster Hunter number one. Um, so I'll probably skip that. Something that does interest me, but I'm reading it in trade is, um, Animosity number 20 coming out, um, by, uh, Marguerite Bennett, uh, Raphael Latore and Marcelo Maiolo. So I really enjoy this series. I try to stay away from the covers and stuff because, uh, for me it's spoilers and I'm a trade, I trade weight it. Uh, but I always like to point out animosity because it's just such a clever idea and, um, you know, still gives the opportunity for massive amounts of, of violence and storytelling. Uh, the other Aftershock comic I want to point out is the trade paperback of Moth and Whisper is coming out. Um, so that's going to collect the first five issues of that series. I hope it continues on. Uh, I will say that the very first issue of Moth and Whisper was probably my my favorite single issue of 2018. And then the series as a whole was also very good and very entertaining. The the issue number one, though, is really the way I wish all issue number ones were. They were just a really good story that can stand on its own. But then you mix in the fact that uh, it... It still grabbed you to continue. It was still grabbed you that it was a serial, but it, it just had its beginning, middle, and end uh, as a number as a number one. Um, continuing with Aftershock, Stronghold number three is coming out, and Stronghold has a uh, very interesting sort of plot line. It is by Phil Hester Ryan, and Ryan Kelly. Now. I've, I've talked about it before. Last week I've talked about it, and I'll talk about it again because Peter Cannon's coming out and Prodigy and Strong. There's always like this sort of perfect man uh, theme that's always gone through comics, but there just seems to be a bunch of them new with new characters coming out now. Word is one of them, or Weird, however you want to pronounce W Y R D, and and Stronghold is similar um, in that there is like this man with a bunch of powers and seems to be. Uh, the best or something, but, um, it's a little bit different because it involves, you know, religious cults and some crazy tall ass alien. And then this guy doesn't really know that he's worshiped or that he's God or a, a God to certain people. Uh, we're only two issues in the cover of issue number three is uh, very, very, very violent looking. It is, um, the protagonist standing in what looks like a, a stadium and everyone has a bunch of blood over them and they're, and they're dead. So that's an interesting cover to put on the, on the, on the newsstands. Um, jumping over to DC, a, this is a vertigo, a vertigo title. Uh, this is American, American carnage number six. We're now deep in to the story of a, um, uh, of an African American man who passes as white that tries to infiltrate the, uh, or a, a racist group. And there's just so many layers in this story. So many people, you know, racial for sure, obviously, uh, by that, uh, description, but black cops that vote for Donald Trump and this cop that gets in deeper than he should and does something he shouldn't have and being cut from the FBI and racists who are rich, they're not just necessarily hillbillies. And then at the same time, are multilingual and seem to understand uh, other cultures. 
So um, just a real intricate and interesting uh, love story that could be burgeoning or is could be just setting us up for something uh, something far more terrible. And we are deep into um, the story, and it's uh, at number six. So I would say at by the time it's at number six, you should probably just get the trade paperback or something. Um, if this is the end, I don't know if this is an ongoing or uh, if this is the end of an arc. Either way, I'm going to do a full review probably uh, on uh, YouTube in the near future. Um, another book in uh, DC's list that is coming, or that the first arc is coming to an end here is Aquaman number 47. Uh, I have really, I very much enjoyed Kelly Sue DeConnick's um, run on this so far. I think we're something like five issues in. Uh, Robson Rocha has, I think, done incredible art. I'm not sure if Danielle Henriques has, has been doing the uh, the coloring the whole time, but uh, Robson Roach has definitely been doing a great job. The story has been very, very good. This arc is ending, so I may or may not do a a full review on the arc. Um, but uh, I've enjoyed it a lot. It's been very imagined, imaginative. I think it's a good way for Kelly Dus Sue DeConnick to have started. Um, the uh, her run on Aquaman. Uh, I'm just. I'm curious because it's a, it feels a little out of universe, just the, the nature of the story and what happened after Drowned Earth. So it's a little out of universe. I mean, in universe, but not with everyone else in the universe kind of thing. So uh, I, after this ends, I'm very excited to see him with Mara and back on back on Earth and, and dealing with uh, Aquaman stuff and see how Kelly Sue uh, does something new. Because she's already six issues in, done a, a ton of a ton of new stuff. So, Aquaman number forty-seven has been, uh, you know, it's been very good. I will probably be going with the Joshua Middleton variant, although the regular cover looks cool too. So we'll see how that works out. I've been getting mostly the B covers. Hey, guess what? It's Batman, and he's back. Um, the Francisco Matina cover looks pretty cool to me. So Tom Tom King. Yannick Paquette on art. Francisco Matinez uh, did the B cover here. And um, I'm not even sure if this is, uh, we're continuing this, uh, this nightmare. Okay, so nightmares comes to a shocking close. So this has been a, a real sort of slugging, slow um, arc. In fact, I'm so glad we got a rest from it getting the, the Flash Batman crossover. But I think we're like six in, so this is a seven-issue arc of just real abstract, weird stories. Batman's seriously tripping on some drugs or having nightmares or something crazy's happening. And, you know, it would have been cool, I think, for two or three issues, probably two, and then let's get on with it. But you just we just stuck to this, like, weird thing. This is going to be the worst trade paperback ever because none of it's going to make sense. You know, if you just wanted to grab, you just heard Tom King was doing Batman and you wanted to grab one of his trades and uh, the word nightmare grabbed you and you went and read it, you'd just be confused. None of it's t put together. It's just really, really, um, really just, in my opinion, C, C minus material. Um, I don't know if altogether it's going to, I don't know if after certain things happen, it's going to all, all come together, but serial wise, having to deal with it for six, seven months, even with a break in the middle. So eight months or something has been a, or eight issues, not months. Cause it comes out twice a month has been a little bit slogging for me and I have not enjoyed it. Maybe once it's all said and done and I realize what Tom King was doing, I'll be like, Oh, that was awesome. So that's still a possibility. So I'm excited for the nightmare arc to end. I also got Lucifer coming in. I haven't read these yet. I don't even know if I have them all, but I'm picking them up. So that's uh, from Sandman. I, I don't have a lot to comment about it. Um, let's see. Um, I did skip Boom Studios. It's nothing there I'm really reading or, or can comment on. I know people like Buffy a lot. Uh, do, 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 Batman. And, um, so if you haven't gotten into Batman who laughs, it's been very good. Supposedly they're doing the final printings of number one, two, and three. 
with Jock on the cover. Same thing with uh, Doomsday Clock. I have not gotten into that. Uh, I'm sort of glad because I would have been annoyed by how long it's taken to get out. And Justice League number 22, I almost started buying that. I'm, I'm really glad I didn't. So I stayed away from that. And I continue to buy Nightwing 59. Literally in front of me, I have number 58 that I haven't read yet. So I'll probably read that afterwards. And I've been on the edge with Nightwing. It's probably one of the books that I'm closer to, to letting go. But then I go and pick it up again. So um, such is life, right? You guys are listening to a podcast about what new comic books are coming out. So you guys know. You guys know how it feels. Um, s- something I finally caught up on was... Um, Peter Cannon Thunderbolt. This is being uh, published by, I forget who publishes, oh, Dynamite. One of the few Dynamite books I'm reading, but I picked it up, of course, if you've listened to me in the past, um, because of uh, Kieran Gillen writing it, who's who's one of my favorite authors in comic books right now. So I figured I'd try it. I'd never heard of Peter Cannon Thunderbolt. I don't know if it's a if it's an old series or or anything, it, it seems like it might have some history. Um, but Kieran Gillen's doing a pretty good job doing sort of the superhero thing. Uh, it makes me... It's one of the few superhero books that's new that I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Normally I'm a little bit done with the post-superhero idea. But um, he's going all in. It doesn't feel post-superhero at all. It's just a superhero book. So I've liked it. Uh, I think that it's only going a handful of issues. I probably won't stay for a second arc if he continues to write it, but I did enjoy it, and it is um, it is something that if you see it on the shelf, you might want to grab it. It's interesting enough. If you're a Kieran Gillen fan, I think it's a good break because he hasn't written superhero stuff in a while, so that's fun to, to see him doing that again. Uh, Star Trek, The Q Conflict from IDW. This is the first Star Trek book I've ever bought. Uh, or I've ever really read or, or decided to collect. And I have to say, I'm, I'm glad that I did. Uh, the, the first couple issues have been okay, but it's sort of like Star Trek porn, essentially. Like, if you like the series and you, you watched them all and, and you enjoyed them or you hated one or two or whatever, you basically have Q bringing all of them at different points in time together. They do a fantasy draft and make teams, so it's not like it's original series versus Next Generation versus DS9. They mix the teams, and they, they're they forced to do um, do a bunch of like uh, random sort of competition or goals or things against each other. We really only got the beginning of that, um, and I believe Janeway's team won. I forgot now, but I, I like it enough to buy it, and I think that uh, Scott Timpton... And David Tipton. So I was going to say, I think I know the writers, but I actually am not familiar with those writers. Uh, and an image, we've got a, just a couple image books that I'm getting into this week. One of them is Assassination Nation number two. The first one was uh, had a, a ton of violence. I'll tell you right now, if you're like an MMA or boxing fan, which I am, you opened up Assassination and you immediately saw this ranking of assassins. And as a um, as a fight fan, you always see players rank. Or a sports fan in general, there's power rankings, and uh, and it just that's just r- real fun to know who's uh, who, what's going on. And a lot of I'm just going to spoil issue number. I'm not going to spoil it, but a lot of this top twenty dies. You got a guy named David Bowie Knife, another guy named Niles Roosevelt, Axelrod, Taipan, Fernando, Red Scorpion, Tanaka. Wintergreen, Frankie Townhouse, the Mamba Twins, Connie the Tank. So, a lot of cool characters. It was, it just felt like, you know, like an MMA thing almost, or, or a boxing thing. And uh, it was extremely violent. And Skybound does a good job in general, uh, with Extremity and Murder Falcon and all that. So, this was worth a purchase, and I'm going to stick with it. And it looks like, I wish I knew if these, once upon a time, it used to, people used to be very clear about books being uh, miniseries, so I'm not sure about this one. Another image book I am getting was, is uh, issue number two to the extremely violent, extremely entertaining, and, and very original Little Bird. So this one does tell me that it's number two of five. 
It is by Darcy Van uh, Polgeest, I am Bertram, and I am Bertram, Ian Bertram, and I enjoyed number one so much. It was just, the art really just fit the storytelling, and sometimes you just got to get used to that, but with Little Bird, it was just an immediate thing. It just, it just worked without any issue or, or any problem, and um, it just made me smile. The whole time, the massive amount of violence made me smile. And uh, in the my previous issues, I've seen the covers of of subsequent issues three and four, I believe at least. And it just looks like it's going to continue to be violent, and other people are going to do violent things. And there's like a cool story around it. So that's the kind of thing that entertains me. Perhaps I'm a sicko. Mm, who knows? I'm pretty sure that I am for things like that. Uh, other things that are coming out from Image, I don't buy, but they always catch my my eye. East of West, number 42, that series is about to end. Um, Gideon Falls, number 12, I think that's over also. And, um, oh, I didn't see Middle West, number 6. That is awesome. And I have to make sure that I'm caught up with Middle West because I've enjoyed that a lot. So Middle West number six by Scotty Young, which is sort of a, a Midwest fantasy sort of thing. So uh, Image is very, very cool. Always putting out good books. Consistent for pretty much the last uh, 20 years. So um, definitely some good stuff there. And then... Um, Nothing really from Lion Forge or or Kodansha Comics grabs me. Iron Circus, I don't really know that that well. Uh, but then we get to Marvel, and there's a lot of Marvel. I don't read Avengers or anything. I've been able to avoid it. But something that I seems to be I'm, seems that I am only talking about is the Age of X Men miniseries. And here you have. Uh, next gen number three of five. This is probably the one uh, that I've enjoyed the least. Um, I just I don't know that I like Glob so much, but it's still good. It's basically like a Generation X type book with the young mutants um, figuring out their way in this sort of strange world that uh, was created by Nate Gray. So it is. Um, you know, it's part of the whole series that I'm buying and reading and, and enjoying. So I'll continue to read it. And it hasn't been bad. It's just if you ha if I had to rank them, I think that's been the one that's been at the bottom. Uh, next up is The Amazing Nightcrawler. This one has some very interesting conflicts in it because Nightcrawler is the most popular uh, person slash mutant in this world. Um, he's part of the X-Men. He's an extremely famous actor. But then at the same time, he's sort of... Uh, sort of break some very explicit rules in the world and and now you're sort of at this at this point with him where he needs to decide if he's a bad person um and sort of the things he's done to defend what <coughs> excuse me what uh what the world thinks is right and whether it actually is so i've actually liked the amazing nightcrawler a lot um also coming up is Daredevil number four. We're now deep into Chip Zdarsky's run. To me, it feels like it's um, heavily influenced by the Netflix Daredevil, which is, you know, it's not a bad thing because that's a great Daredevil, but that Daredevil sort of encompassed a lot of Daredevil over the years. So it's a, it's been a lot of whining about Catholicism and stuff. A lot of people really like this book. So I am um, lukewarm on it. But I still like it. Uh, I tried to quit it after Charles Soule's run, but Chip Zdarsky is just a really good writer for one. So I was, you know, always like looking at it out of the side of my eye. And then plus, so so many people have liked it. Um, I think I've not read number three yet, so that's also a. I can't remember if I have, but number four is coming out, so that's also um, another little point uh, that I should throw out there to. Uh, to people that are considering buying it, I really am the only person that's reading it that's like, oh, it's okay. It's okay, but I'm sure to get better. And Chip Zdarsky is one of the best writers in comics today. Definitely one of the most underrated. Next up is Guardians of the Galaxy. We have a few variants. This is uh, Donny Cates and Jeff Shaw. Ryan Benjamin probably did one of the covers. Hey, so Guardians, I thought the first issue, a lot happened. And then issues, issue number two and three, sort of like, just sort of existed, and um, I hate to say it because Donny Cates is awesome. He's one of the hotter writers right now, but 
same thing sort of happened in Venom. Like, hey, uh, can we move along? It felt like we should move along a little quicker. Do these need, are these issues that we need to be telling? Like, do they, the, this needs to be full issues here. Could we just get to what you wanted to say? And um, I'm hoping that we get really into the meat with Guardians 4. Something awesome happens. Um, I'm not going to drop it because I'm excited to be to start reading sort of the cosmic Marvel. I've never been super into it. Um, very excited about you know Silver Surfer Black coming out and stuff like that. And Guardians, it's all going to surround around Guardians. So um, it would be like the flagship cosmic title. So I'll, I'll definitely stick with it for um, a lot longer, even though I was a little bit only so so on issue on issues uh, two and three. Not that I, not that the writing was bad or the art was bad. It just you know, are we moving along was the question. Um, and uh, here's something by Chip Zdarsky that has been very good and Mark Bagley is this idea uh, that Spider-Man just ages through the years. So Spider-Man number one, uh, Spider-Man life story number one, the 60s was very good. The only problem was is that that's actually how he acted in the 60s. So, so Chip Zdarsky essentially wrote a one shot that was the Spider-Man we're sort of familiar with, the young Spider-Man 60s. I think that this series is going to really um, go off, I should say, or, or really um, have a chance to be classic with this issue. And this is Spider-Man in the 70s. He's going to be a little bit older, you know, 10 years older, I'd imagine, give or take a few years. And um, and then we're going to really feel what the 70s look like and and aging and, and we're going to really feel going to really get to what I think Chip Zdarsky's idea was uh, when he was doing this. Um, so uh, I'm very happy. This is just a really good idea. So I'm, I'm very happy with the idea. Uh, they, they pulled me in. I hope that it is executed well. Mark Bagley is on the art, and uh, he did great in the first issue. And this cover with, um, uh, with, a, with, with a green goblin uh, disco ball sort of thing. Um, is pretty cool, in my opinion. So I am going to be very excited to buy that one. And the only two Star Wars books I saw, or at least the ones I'm picking up, are uh, the Age of Rebellion special and TIE Fighter number one. So let me tell you why each of these are important. So the Age of Rebellion special, I've uh, talked you know, I've said good things and bad things about these age of sort of series. Um, they're all one shots. They're all one character and they've been okay. None of them have been bad. They've just been okay. Definitely filler. Age of Rebellion. Um, I sort of wish that, that they would have done this in full issues because Age of Rebellion, what it does is it's going to do even shorter one-shot stories, maybe like eight to ten page stories or something like that about lesser-known characters, ones that really probably couldn't hold their own book, you know. So we've had Princess Leia and, and Grand Moff Tarkin. This uh, will probably tell stories about... Um, just let me look here. Uh, OIG-88 and... And uh, a Yoda story, right, which is hard to tell because he's on Dagobah. So... Um, it's going to be things like that, just shorter, even shorter stories. I liked the Age of the Republic special, um, and and I like them all. They just feel like filler. Like, hey, give me some cool comics. Are so important in Star Wars to me that hey, give me some just really good, interesting stuff. Like, you know, hearing Greg Pak and Phil Noda are doing Star Wars after Kieran Gillen leaves is just great news. I can't wait for those to come out. Of course, I also want to read Kieran Gillen's Star Wars. The next Star Wars book up um, that I'll be grabbing is Star Wars TIE Fighter num number one of five. Uh, this is by Jody Hauser, who wrote most of the Republic series, Age of Republic series. And like I said, they were okay, but they were one shot. So they were written well, so but not her fault. They're just not that important necessarily, right? So um, this is basically the a prequel I read to the Alphabet Squadron book that is coming out. Um, which is going to have Harrison Dula in it and a bunch of new characters. Uh, um, uh, fighter pilots have to learn how to live after the rebellion. Um, so the Tie Fighter, I don't know if it's, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to read the solicit. So I don't know if it's, you know, this group before or after the rebellion or how it's going to work or during it when when the rebellion wins. So I'm very interested in that. I like Jody Hauser. 
Uh, this is also Roger Antonia, Giuseppe uh, uh, Camuncoli, and Elia Bonetti. So uh, those are probably some of those uh, uh, cover artists. So, And then at the end of the solicit, I didn't read it here, but be sure to pick up the first book of the Fighter Sister novel series, Star Wars Alphabet Squadron by Alexander Freed. Alexander Freed was at Celebration and um, gave some pretty good interviews about his books and, and what's coming out there. So Marvel's sort of pulled me into two uh, big events. One is, of course, Age of X-Men, and then even bigger is War of the Realms. And that's where we're getting Thor number 12. This is a tie-in. Um, so I'm not, in sh I'm not sure what's going on. It, Thor went to another, uh, another universe, um, you know, with uh, Frost Giants or whatever. I don't even know what's going on. I really don't know. I thought that he was going to be on Earth from the beginning, but he's on his little side quest, it looks like. So that's Thor number 12. It's being j written by J uh, Jason Aaron, and Mike Del Mundo has been awesome on the art. I just really love, like, the Phil Noto, Michael Del Mundo, Christian Ward sort of watercolory style. So, hey, I just I guess I'm just bought in, guys. And uh, we'll get to War of the Realms again in a second, but let's talk about Uncanny X-Men. Uh, this has been pretty much awesome, I think. Uh, Matthew Rosenberg has taken a dark turn with the X-Men, especially while a lot of them have disappeared or, you know, died, I say in quotes, but they're obviously in this little pocket universe, uh, this Age of X-Men pocket universe. Um, so Cyclops and the X-Men have set out to save mutant kind, but the mutant liberation front isn't going to just wait for it to happen. So I liked it a lot. It's almost like a Cyclops Wolverine team up book. Um, they still don't love each other, but they, they respect each other. And I think Matthew Rosenberg's done a great job so far, uh, on the book. And, uh, let's get back into war of the realms. There is three more War of the Realms books to talk about. So there's the main title. That's number two of six. Uh, I guess it's come out. I guess it's coming out every couple weeks. I thought it was going to be monthly, but they're not going to do that. Um, I've been getting the connecting variants. I like connecting variants just the way I am, I guess. Um, so uh, War of the Realms number two of six, the Kamun Coley connecting variant is the one I will be getting. They only sort of connect, but... Um, Looks like there's going to be 10, and we will see number 3 of 10 uh, coming out on Wednesday, April uh, 17th. Uh, the other two were for War of the Realms number 1, and then War of the Realms uh, Journey into Mystery. So that's going to be the main title. If you really wanted to know what was going on in War of the Realms, you would just buy these six issues. They're $4.99, but they're... they're um, they're more than the regular 24 or 32 pages, I believe. So they're very good, and they just will be uh, all you really need to read. Um, but if you're like me and stupid, you're also going to go check out uh, War of the Realms Punisher number one. Uh, this sort of made me happy. Jerry Duggan is uh, writing it. Marcelo Fiera and Marco Djurjevic is also on it. Um but this is interesting. Jason Aaron was excited to bring these people to Midgard, a.k.a. Earth. And the reason was is he wanted to see, like, characters that you wouldn't normally see fighting frost giants and dark elves and whatnot, fighting them because they just all appear in New York. So Punisher gets his own um, War of the Realms miniseries. It's just going to be three issues, as does Venom. And this one also has a Kamukoli... I'm just killing his name, I think. I'm very sorry. Uh, connecting variant, and that's number four of ten. And that's the one I'll be getting. Then we have War of the, War of the Realms War, uh, War Scrolls. Um, so this is a must-read companion to the War of the Realms. Gifted the sight of the Bifrost, Daredevil watches all Midgard burn under Malekith's invasion. How will the Guardian of Hell's Kitchen guard an entire Earth turned to Hell? Find out in a story by Jason Aaron, Aaron, so that's why I'm buying this one, because Jason Aaron's actually writing this one too, and Andrea Sorrent Sorrentino, uh, all this and more, including a new Howard the Duck story. What the hell is that about? Well, anyway, uh, this is uh, War Scrolls, I think, mostly covers Darede or Daredevil. What's important about it is that Jason Aaron's writing it, so you should do, this is the order you should do it in. You should do just War of the Realms, 
if you're trying to save money and you just want to do a Marvel event, why not, right? Just be festive. After that, you should just find the ones that Jason Aaron's writing. So that's War of the Realms, Thor, uh, War of the Realms, War Scrolls, and I think there's uh, one other one. But that'd be the other one because this is really, the sh he's the showrunner of this, and um, this is really his way to say goodbye to his four, five-year run on Thor, and uh, he's doing it with a giant battle of the Ten Realms, and, you know, Thor's going to save some stuff, hopefully gets his hammer back. So, um, so continuing past Marvel, uh, we got all those War of the Realms, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then uh, in the world of indie comics, uh, Rise number two is coming out. I read number one. The art was beautiful. The writing was fine. It was just very wordy. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt or however you want. Um, I, I'm going to still think, I think I'm still going to buy it for the art just because I enjoyed it so much. And I, I want to see how, what this writer does, uh, Donna Guillo. I want to see sort of where it goes. It, it's either going to be an example of something that's good, but not very comic booky or, you know, something that I just enjoy or maybe have to even read twice. The font was also really printed really small on it. So it's not perfect. Um, but the cover's cool, the art was beautiful, and the story's got me enough, um, you know, I mean, it really needed to reread, to be honest, so I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing, but um, it's going to get me for number two at least. I, I, You also know that I like reading this, these indie things a little bit more. I like to see what the, the indie world's doing, so Scout Comics is uh, one of those books, and they're also very nice-looking books, pa nice paper everything you'd want. So anyway, um, that's going to be it. My name's Chris Sarda. This is not part of your scene. You can find me at not part of your scene on Instagram at Chris Sarda on Twitter. Um, I'm doing a lot of writing for dork side of the force right now for star Wars and, um, and then a lot of sports stuff, chaotic sports.com, or you can also just, uh, Look for the Chaotic Sports Podcast. That's where we do most of the work. Anyway, thank you guys for uh, watching. Let me know what you're buying, what I skipped. Um, I'm still looking for an Archie fan. Tell me how much they love Archie and that they buy it and stuff. Anyway, you guys be good to each other. Thank you so much for listening and for finding joy in something that I find joy in and happiness in, uh, which is the world of sequential art, AKA graphic novels, AKA let's just call them comic books, guys. You guys have a great day.